There was so much wrong with this tweet. The Wizards said to vote for Russell Westbrook for the All-Star Game. Never mind that the account they tagged has six followers, but Russ might be the least valuable player in the NBA. Instead, there are some other surprising players that do deserve that honor. This video breaks down my starters and reserves for the All-Star Game so far. Hey, it's Casey. Welcome to AIM Hoops. Hit subscribe and notification bells. We just passed 100,000 subs. Obviously, we have this new set. Um, check out the 100K subs announcement video at the end of this video. Let's start in the East. My first starting guard is Jalen Brown. The NBA has Jalen as a guard, even though he's played a little more forward, but whatever. He's not only a first-time All-Star, but he's a starter. He's scoring over 27 points per game with insane efficiency and good defense. The C's have injuries and players who left, but Jalen just balls out. Next up, starting, Bradley Beal. If they actually have an All-Star game, I predict Beal's trade request will come soon after because he'll finally play with talented teammates again. It hurts to start a dude from the last place team, but Beal deserves it. Even though he leads the NBA in scoring at 35 points, he's efficient. He doesn't take away from his own teammates. Look, if Trey Young could be a starter last year, Beal can too. Starting at Ford, Giannis Antetokounmpo. The MVP talk is dead this year for some reason, but Giannis is quietly making history. 27 points, 11 boards, 6 assists, and over a block? That's been done by just four people. Larry Bird, Kareem, Boogie, randomly, and Giannis. I'm not sure he'll be captain with our next All-Star healthy again, but there's no doubt the Greek freak should start. That next All-Star is Kevin Durant. Of course he'll get the most votes. Not only does KD look like himself, but he's guarding the other team's best player. Over 30 efficient points per game, and he's still about eight boards and six assists his career averages. KD is getting MVP love and rewriting what players can do after an Achilles tear. For me, he should be picking teams live on TNT. At center starting is Joel Embiid. Speaking of MVP love, Embiid is putting up career best numbers. He's averaging a double-double with about 28 points and 40% from downtown. Dude's playing good defense and closing games like never before. This is the best version of Embiid we've ever seen. Let's go to the East Reserves and Kyrie Irving is first up. Look, a lot of people have Kyrie starting, but I'm not gonna reward him for bailing on his team for about two weeks. Yeah, his numbers are elite, 28 points, six assists, a steal and a block but it's the all-star game. Kyrie is obviously a star, so he makes it. I think Beal and Jalen Brown are more deserving to start, so Kyrie's off the bench. Next reserve, James Harden. Again, pencil the beard in as an all-star every year, but he's not gonna start after how embarrassing he was leaving Houston. He half tried the first few weeks, and he's deferring a lot in Brooklyn. I actually hate even putting him on this list, but dude is literally a superstar. And since this game is about stars, he's a lock. Our first forward is Jason Tatum. He's played the same amount of games as Kyrie with injury, but when he does play, Tatum is electric. That opening night game winner, the behind the back dime the other night, Tatum is averaging an insane 27 points on 44% from downtown. That's not gonna last, but he is an all-star. Our next forward is Bam Adebayo. Basically the only good thing about this season for the Heat so far, yeah, they're losing with him as their number one option, but if Bam was an all-star last year, he has to be this season. Bam's numbers are slightly better than 2020, and he brings it on both ends. I believe Miami will start to win games more, so if he's off this list, it will be an embarrassing snub. Our next forward, Damanis Sabonis, the best passing big man in the East with scoring at all three levels. Sabonis is Indy's best player with the team around a top three seed. We're all surprised at how good the Pacers have been, but we shouldn't be with Sabonis a legit star in the making. We've got two wild cards to fill out, and the first goes to Tobias Harris. 
This dude is close to earning his contract, which we never thought would happen. I don't even care about the numbers, because if you watch the games, it's obvious Tobias is a winning player. But for the record, hitting about 20 points per game, seven assists, at 47% from deep and decent defense. With Philly in first place, He's pushing for the best number two in the East. Our last wild card goes to Trey Young. You know I hate giving Trey this last spot, but I've always said he doesn't lead to winning, and when the Hawks are in a playoff spot, he deserves credit. Trey's putting up his usual 27 points, nine assists, but he lost his shot for a little while, so he's kind of inefficient this year. His defense is bad as usual, but this is the all-star game. He is a star in this league. Just ask the refs who are giving him the James Harden treatment with foul calls. This means there are some pretty notable East snubs and the biggest of all is Zach Levine. And I know a lot of you are asking, how could you not put a 27 point per game really efficient player in? Cause he's a loser. Every team he's been on has lost. The Bulls are out of the playoffs because he's their best player and he can't guard a soup can with league leading turnovers. My second snub, Chris Middleton. He's about 21 points, six assists and efficient. The second best player on a great team, but like another snub, Malcolm Brogdon, other players have a little more star power. Clint Capella is a huge reason Atlanta is winning more games with good defense and a career year, but his numbers don't quite make it in a crowded East front court. Okay, let's go over to the West All-Stars, our two starting guards. First, Damian Lillard. About 30 points per game and seven assists is one thing, but when Portland has been hit with injuries again and Dame keeps them afloat, he is a lock to start. Our second starter, Donovan Mitchell. I don't care that Luka and Steph have better numbers. Spider Mitchell is about 24 points per game, a career high five assists, even though Shaq says he's not a passer, tied his career high in boards, and the Jazz are around first in the West. Mitchell is one of the most efficient starting guards in that conference, and he deserves big praise for their big start. Two starting forwards, the first, LeBron James, obviously still the best player alive. He's chasing Michael Jordan, not all-star games, so this is a no-brainer. Let's also point out, not only does he have MVP numbers, he's top five in minutes played. No days off for the king. Our second forward, Paul George. My entire look at Paul George embarrassing his haters will be linked at the end of the video, but the point is he is a two-way beast in the 50-40-90 club so far. Pandemic P won't be dead until the playoffs, but in the regular season, he is MVP worthy. And our starting center is Nikola Jokic. He never got legit MVP buzz because he came into seasons out of shape. This year, it's skinny Jokic from day one. Already second all time in double doubles to start a season at 20, Jokic averaged a triple double the first 14 games until Denver needed him to score more. So the team is winning now and looks scary. Our first reserve guard is Stephen Curry. Yes, Steph is back playing like a champion, but the team is really inconsistent. I love Steph's stats, but an over-reliance on him has been bad for the team. The Warriors actually outscore opponents with Steph on the bench. Obviously, he's not a bad player with that stat, but it breaks the tie between Steph and Donovan Mitchell starting. Our next guard is Luka Doncic, another elite MVP type not starting. The reason for Luka is hitting Russ level bad 29% from three on over seven attempts a game. That hurts his team. We could go on about how awesome he is, but this is the case for Luka not starting the All-Star game. Our first reserve forward is Anthony Davis. AD is a beast, but he's off to a slow-ish start by his awesome standards. Dude's been a little banged up, so it's understandable, but there's no way he's off the All-Star team. Like LeBron, it's about championships for AD at this point, so he's fine coming off the bench. Our next forward, Kawhi Leonard. He could easily start over Paul George, but I gave the nod to PG with all the pressure he was under to start. Kawhi though, even better than last season. The scoring is down a little bit, but the efficiency and assists are a career high. If Kawhi continues like this all year, 
he could win his first MVP. Our next reserve here is Rudy Gobert. He is on track to win a third Defensive Player of the Year. Yeah, his offense is underwhelming as usual, but it's really hard to leave him off the list that dominant on defense that's leading to wins. The Jazz are one of the biggest surprises, and they deserve two All-Stars. Our first wild card, Brandon Ingram. The Pelicans are bad, but this feels like the Bam out of biopic in the East. I mean, B.I. was an All-Star last year, and his numbers are the same, but Ingram has upped his defense even more. It's clear New Orleans' best player is Ingram, not Zion. Now, the coaching mess has to sort itself out after a shaky start. Our final spot in the West goes to Devin Booker. Chris Paul is the NBA assist leader, which frees up Mitchell to do other things. He is the best player on a winning Suns team and should get his first legit All-Star. Last year, he made it as an injury replacement. So, our West snubs are led by CP3. He's not just in Phoenix to mentor, he came in to play and he's as good as expected. Christian Wood is our next snub. He's the most deserving rocket, averaging career highs in every major category. If his defense was better, Wood would knock off established stars. CJ McCollum was a lock for the All-Star game before his injury. 27 points, really efficient, but missing every game after January 14th is too much. John Morant and Zion Williamson are snubs in their second seasons. John missed a little time, but really he's the victim of a stacked West. Zion is averaging 24 points per game, but he brings no defense and has not developed his offensive game. So if you guys want a deeper dive into how Paul George is embarrassing his haters and Zion Williamson just not developing, uh, I've got those videos linked right here. But just a few more weeks until the All-Star voting ends, but that's what my ballot looks like so far.